so this week what I'd really like to do is actually get something moving. Um, now to do that obviously I need a hydraulic power supply, a power pack, and uh, I've managed to pick up something off eBay which is a little single phase power, uh, power pack unit uh, originally used for like car lifts in garages and what have you. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is uh, commissioning that this week and hopefully uh, if I get it done maybe I'll be able to fire it up and uh, get these things moving under manual control for now. Um, so let's just have a look at that. So I picked up this little single phase power pack unit um, on eBay. It's a bit of a bargain. Basically it's an old Smith's High Industries hydraulic unit used for kind of scissor lifts and that kind of thing in garages. Um, it's not usually a little half a kilowatt motor, it's currently configured. It can deliver uh, 70 bar pressure at about 4 litres a minute, which is fine for just testing on the bench. Um, it's got a little 4.5 litre reservoir at the back here, it's got a pressure relief valve built in. It came with a bunch of fittings and what have you rigged up for a single acting ram. Um, what I'm uh, going to do today to commission this Basically, I've added a CTOP3 manifold here. It's a four station manifold, so I can add like a manual valve on here. It's another thing I picked up on eBay. Or I could use later on, I can fit one of my servo valves when I want to close the loop and check that the uh, closed loop system's working correctly. Um, so, yeah, nice little uh, manifold station there. I've added a, quite a large filter, I couldn't find a small one, and I happen to have bits for this already um, because. With hydraulic fluids you really need to keep them clean, especially when you're working with servo valves which are very fussy um, with uh, oil and contamination. So this is about, um, I think this is a 10 micron filter on here. Uh, check valve down here, that's pretty much it at the moment. It's going to be a fairly simple rig to start with. I will eventually, I quite like to make this kind of, you know, quite a nice little unit and I'll move this around. I'll probably mount it on some kind of metal frame um, and I'll also add eventually some cooling so I don't think these are really designed for to run for any length of time it's a very small tank on here and the oil won't really have much dwell time in the tank so it'll probably overheat quite fast if it's run continuously um, but for now I'll just rig it up see if it works um, flush the system through and maybe add the manual valve and if I get that far it'd be really good to plug it into the gripper and see something moving <laughs> This is um, pretty much ready to commission. I just thought I'd uh, give you a closer look at what's going on. So obviously the motor, um, inside of the tank here there's a gear pump attached to the motor which is on this um, on the back of this central manifold unit. Uh, inside this particular manifold there is a pressure release valve on this side so that kind of sets the uh, maximum system pressure and when there's no demand for oil basically that relief valve relieves back into the tank. Um, and then on this side, this valve in here, these two should be uh, a, an offloading valve. So when the motor stops running and there's no pressure, this valve basically should open up and release any pressure in, on this side of the check valve back into tank, which also means that the motors uh, can start up because it's not trying to generate pressure straight away. Uh, and as it does start up and the pressure builds up, this valve should shut off uh, and then the pressure relief valve should take over. So um, kind of that's that section and then coming down here this is the uh, the little hydraulic multimeter test point I was talking about earlier. So I can plug in the system here to measure pressure, temperature and flow. Um, then there's check valve going into the C-top uh, manifold. Um, so it's a four station like I mentioned before. We've only got one station in use at the moment which is this manual lever control valve. Uh, the rest are blanked off and then the return line coming back to the filter, uh, through the filter and back into the tank. Um, so it's a pretty simple setup at the moment. Uh, I will make it pretty at some point but for now it's good enough. Um, fingers crossed basically. Pressure goes up 70 bar.
okay so it's kind of working it's just noisy um, and I mean this is taking way too much flow off the pump at the moment which is why the pressure's dropping so much I need to uh, try and remember what um, the flow rating is for this particular sensor because I'm pretty sure it's not listed on here it's a different uh, different type of sensor to this um, but there is a chart for it somewhere I'll try and find that out and find out what kind of flow that was drawing but uh, anyway it's a thumbs up it's working next thing is to attach the hoses to the cylinder they should come out the side here um, ultimately I'd like to bring them out the top but I need to sort of nibble away some of the mechanism here because there's not enough room for the hoses I'm going to use banjo fittings I think or possibly a compact elbow uh, the banjo is more compact than the elbow because you can get it in much tighter space um, so it might be that I have to use that but I'll give that a go and then hopefully we can see some movement <laughs> fittings attached to the hoses and uh, that worked out really nicely coming out the side this was the original design that I had in mind I might come back to bringing them out the top at some point but for now this is great um, it's ready to test I think so uh, I've got a celebratory cup of tea standing by um, let's fire it up and give it a go <laughs> drink my tea. I might look at putting the grippers on top, bolting it down to the bench. I don't know, I'm playing with it I guess. tips onto the stubs uh, they've gone on really nicely they meet really well they're very square at the top here um, and I've also added these plates so one goes at the top either side and one at the bottom either side uh, and the, the theory behind this is that you bolt these on and I could make either soft uh, tips or pinch point or uh, toothed ones so basically you have kind of different tips that you can install depending on what you want to do with the gripper um, so I guess now I'll just give it another test so that works really nicely um, and I also did a quick bit of maths to work out the forces at play here so uh, this is a 32 millimeter bore cylinder it's quite a small cylinder so that's a surface area of eight square centimeters uh, so to work out the force we multiply the surface area by the pressure 70 bar at the moment and that gives us a force of 560 kilograms so now at this pivot point to this pivot point to the pinch point here sorry uh, that's a ratio of about 0.3 the distance between these two points um, so that gives us about 163 kilograms of, for of force here and if we do the same for the pinch point this is about 660 millimeters on this pivot sorry is about 70 mil uh, so that gives about 56 to 59 kilograms of pinch at the, at the tip here um, I mean they're not massive numbers you know this is uh, I never really designed this for crushing things it's more about a demonstration piece uh, and to give the mentors the ability to handle objects um, but of course all of these these um, forces will more than double when it goes on the mentors because the mentors has 165 bar working pressure um, and if I did want to increase it maybe I could put a bigger cylinder down here maybe a 40 mil cylinder which would increase again quite significantly but uh, so far very pleased couldn't really finish without putting Sonic in the grippers and uh, well this guy's been sat on the wall for a long time it's a hex pod I made probably 10 years ago the design was okay but the servos were terrible it was a uh, predecessor for one of my kits anywho I'm <laughs> 